right behind me is the famous lawn at Pebble Beach, and uh, thought we'd take our crew and check out some uh, cool cars, including the very first Duesenberg ever. Come on. We're out here on the lawn with two very significant Lamborghinis. This is Maurizio, and your official title is? Director of Research and Development of Automobile Lamborghini. Director of Research and Development. And right behind us is the very first Lamborghini ever produced. So this would be what, 1963 or 64? 64. 64. Okay, tell us about this car. This car is really the genesis of Lamborghini. Uh, this was the first car produced in Sant'Agata and was the dream of Ferruccio Lamborghini to have a V12 more advanced than the V12 of the neighbors right, of Lamborghini. Right. And they was able for first to put, for example, the double camshaft in a V12 right. when the other use only the single one. They have a completely independent uh, uh, suspension in every, in every wheel in order to give the best dynamic behavior and also the comfort. And it's clear that this was really a marvelous exercise of a team of engineering uh, under the future. When this car first came out, American journalists especially were amazed that it was so smooth and so fast for a road car because most of your neighbor's cars, as they said, were a bit rough and more race car-like. Yeah. And, and Lamborghini set out to produce perfect road-going cars. We all know the story of the clutch and Ferrari and all that kind yeah. of thing. And I'm sure some of that is true and some exaggerated. But the outcome was that it was a very civilized road car with its, a lot of horsepower. And who, who did this body originally? Uh, at the end, of the, the two main uh, responsible of this car was uh, uh, engineer Stanzani and Engineer Dallara, two yeah, of the most right. famous uh, engineering in Italy. Right, because I remember originally people weren't crazy about the design at the time. Yeah. So they went to the uh, the later later design. They switched designers. Yeah. Was it Mr. Scaglione was That's the Scaglione. designer yes, of, yes. The, of the 350. Right, right. But but the the heart, the soul of the car, that wonderful V12, which was used for almost 50 years. Yeah. Something like that. So. That would be the equivalent in America like the small block Chevy. It was one of those engines that was just very versatile. You could put it in Muir, Countach, yeah. Espada, a great, great motor. So that's the very first car. Yeah. Uh, can we look over and see? Uh, this is the very latest car. <laughs> this is uh, the tribute of the 50 years of Lamborghini, made from Lamborghini. It's right. really our internal tribute. We try to put here all our expertise and uh, to make the uh, really moving from the first to the last. We talk about, again, V12. Right. This is a, a last evolution with 750 horsepower, okay. four-wheel drive, all carbon fiber. That is uh, the best knowledge that we have in Lamborghini. And uh, uh, for this time, we designed the car in the same way between engineering and aerodynamics in uh, like to have one brain with the two end, right. one for design and one for aerodynamics. Yeah, yeah. So that was 350 horsepower, which seemed <laughs> outrageous in the day. And yeah. this is 750 50. horsepower. So that's, yeah. uh, and this probably gets as good a gas mileage as that, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, <laughs> can we open the? Yeah, sure. And across the famous Lamborghini doors. Yeah. And it's full of carbon fiber, new technology. For example, here we have uh, this upholstery that is made in carbon fiber. And we, right. we patent and we develop and we call carbon skin. It's a lighter of leather of Alcantara and it's cool. It's, uh, you can use in every way. And right. also here you can see we have uh, for the first time use of a forged that was part of the development of the Sesto Elemento, also for part like seat and interiors of the car. Nicely done. Let's compare it to the interior of this car. This was seen as a luxury car because it had electric windows, which was unusual yeah. for an Italian car back in the day, electric windows. And of course the classic wood steering wheel, which is always yeah. a favorite of mine. You can't do that anymore. That's illegal. And of course, the five-speed gearbox. Yeah, manual was really. And yeah. one of the peculiarity of this car was that for the first time in this car was used a gearbox that was a ZF driver right. from Maserati. Right. But after some uh, application, they, we recognized that it was not enough. Uh, uh, the synchronizer cannot work because we have more and more torque. And for the first time, Lamborghini decided to make in house also gearbox. Right. Means, oh, for this car. We produce in house also gearbox that was for this time something really unique. Well, it's just they're both very, very impressive. It's fun to see the uh, the change from the first to the most recent. So yeah. pretty impressive. Thank you for taking it was the really time. Really pleasure. Very Grazie. impressive and happy anniversary. Grazie. Happy anniversary. <laughs> We're here on the lawn at Pebble Beach. 
and if you're a Duesenberg enthusiast, you'll be pretty excited about this because this is the very first Duesenberg ever built. Uh, historically, that's pretty amazing if you're a Duesenberg enthusiast like I am. This is a car that preceded the J. It's the very first one. This and it's still in the ownership of the original family. This is Mr. Castle. How are you, sir? I'm well, thank you, Jay. And, and what, your great uncle bought this car? Great, great uncle. Great, great uncle. Now, mm -hmm. was he a, a, a real car enthusiast? What made him buy something from a brand new company that had never built a car before? Any idea? Well, he wasn't an auto enthusiast, but he was friends with the Duesenbergs, and oh. the rest is history. Yeah, they built this car for him? For him. Okay, very good. So did he say, I wanted a coupe, I want a convertible, or they built the car and he just walked in and bought it? No, he ordered it for him because he was a very large man, right. um, and he needed a car that would, would hold up uh, in Hawaii and the salt and the okay, rough so, roads. Oh, so this car went to Hawaii? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so 1921 goes to Hawaii, and at one point, it pretty much went down to not a piece of junk, but uh, just an old worn out car, wasn't it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It was a wreck. Yeah. Because I saw this car maybe 15, 18 years ago in a barn or garage or something up here in, in Monterey. Well, that was my shop. Oh, that was your shop. Yeah, okay. but it's okay. It was a barn, actually. Okay. Well, sorry about um, that. I remember seeing it going, oh my God, the very first do something. It's like, you know, like, it was like finding a, a, a sunken treasure ship or something. Absolutely. I mean, that's what was amazing to me. Oh. And you gave it to one of the best guys in the world to restore, Bruce Canepa, who is famous for, well, you probably know him for you, you're the guy that certified the 959 Porsche and got yeah. that into the country and F1s and does all kinds of race cars. This is your first classic restoration, is that correct? First pre-war car ever. First pre-war car ever. Yeah. Well, you know, for a first time, that's a heck of a, that's a, heck of a deal. <laughs> Tell me what problems you encountered with this. Well, so we started with bugs in the wood. Bugs in the wood, yeah. termites? Yeah. Thing no, it, yeah. You know, it, it, of course, it suffered 50 years in Hawaii. So right. it had corrosion and had corrosion in the aluminum body. It had rot in the wood. It had rust in the steel. Right. And um, and that was all. And our goal was really to save every square inch of the original car, not make new parts. Right. Really restore the original parts. And put it back to... And put it back to as it was new. Because in 29, it was updated to be a more modern car. When, and you had to go back and put it back into 21 specs. Exactly. Right? When we got it from Jimmy, it had Model J headlights, wheels, hubs, steering gear assembly, steering wheel, gauges, lights, everything. Wow. They, had, they had done what you would do. They upgraded everything on the car. And then we, we, we brought it all back to all the original pictures and exactly how it was built. Wow, very cool. <laughs> well, it's just, you know, it's an amazing car because cars don't look like this anymore. It has sort of a horseless carriage look to it almost. It does. Yet, it, in its day in 21, it was quite modern. Hydraulic brakes, correct? Hydraulic brakes. So the very first American car ever to have hydraulic brakes, I believe. Certainly. Right. And uh, it's a straight eight overhead cam. Correct. Can we can we open the hood? We can, can we? we can do that. That's the, uh, stunning. Yeah, look at that. Oh. Well, you can see some of the Duesenberg touches. The, up till the J, they still use this type of filler. Yeah. And notice your here's your dipstick right here. I love it. Yeah, isn't that great? It's yeah, that great. had that float. And very advanced for its for its time. Overhead cam. The Duesenberg brothers were race car engineers, so they built this was a fast car back in yeah. the day, wasn't it? This car went very well through the corkscrew on Thursday. Oh yeah. Dad. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Having wow. DNA yeah. of a race car. <laughs> yeah. It it was very easy. All right, we're here to judge your car. Good to see you again. Let me show you how this judging works. You do yeah. it like this. You got Hello, fellas. How are you? Nice <laughs> you got, to see you. you <laughs> well, the judges are here to judge the car, so we you'll hear it run and start up, and we'll look we'll look over their shoulders and see how they do. These are the uh, the curmudgeonly judges here at Pebble Beach. They're quite serious. <laughs> and you drove in this as a kid, huh? Oh yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. In the mud and the dirt, yeah, and, yeah. It, and just drove it because it was supposed to be used. Yeah. It was it was it was lacquer. And we stripped it, we stripped it to the black well, lacquer. What I mean is... As you can see, it takes quite a while for the judges to go over every little, literally every nook and cranny of the car. Uh, sometimes you can lose points if something is over-restored, if it looks too good. So, uh, it's, a, it's a fine line. You know, this is uh, Pebble Beach, and uh, it doesn't get any more uh, strict than this, really. They check every little thing, every little... This is CAD-plated, it should be left un. I mean, it's just... It's unbelievable. So we'll let them do their work and uh, we'll move on to something else. Uh, 
Okay, we're out here on the lawn at the Pebble Beach looking at some of the concept cars, some of the beautiful cars. You know, it's so hard to make a modern car look beautiful because you have so many regulations and rules you have to follow. It's not like the old days when a designer could just have free reign and design whatever they want. This is Louis, you are head of design for Touring Superleggera, correct? That's right. Okay, and you designed this beautiful Alfa Romero which has all sorts of classic clues. Tell us about this car. Well, as you know, Touring Superleggera <coughs> is an old um, coach-built company, Italian right. company, which exists since 1926. Uh, this is a reinterpretation of one of the masterpieces made by Touring Superleggera in uh, 52. This car is a completely hand-built in Milan, in Italy. It's uh, aluminum and carbon fiber. Right. That car was presented as a world premiere in uh, Villa d'Este, and this car won Villa d'Este this year. So tell us some of the challenges you had to do. There's so many government regulations now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Where you have to, headlights have to be a certain height and all this type of thing. And you've done a wonderful job. I've seen pictures of this car, and you really have to see it in person to, to really do it justice. This part, tell me about here with enclosing the wheels. Well, yeah, this was maybe the most difficult point. Yeah. It was to, to give this feeling of aerodynamics and power on mm -hmm. the car. Because of modern cars, we have, you have quite big front tracks. Right. Uh, we had to find the right position of this aluminum profile to give the impression that the front fender cover the front wheels and in the same times, uh, we need space to turn the wheels. Uh, that was the, the tricky point. Right. And of course the magic here, yeah. Superleggera, that's one of those legendary, just the script and the way it is applied, it just brings back all sorts of exciting memories and uh, of some of the greatest cars ever. Let's take a look at the back of the car. That's what I like, just the haunches, if you will. <laughs> it sort of looks like an animal right here. Uh, this is the really the exciting part of the car for me. The front is beautiful too, but the rear end really excels because that's really the part most people will see is it's pulling away. That's right. <laughs> and the way you tell me about this here. The idea was to transform this volume. It's all about volumes. Right. And you get the 8C who look a bit like a bull because all the power goes up. And I wanted something really horizontal on the Discovalante, more like a horse. Right. And that's why you get this glass roof and small glass to give all this horizontal line. As you can see, for example, the rear fender is really low with respect to the 8C competition. Right. The best point of view is when you sit on the wheel and you look, you look sorry, at the mirror, mm -hmm. and then you can see this huge table behind you. Right, right. Mm -hmm. when, when artists paint, they paint what they want. They don't get a lot of rules about what you have to do and what you can't do. And that's what makes it tough for artists like this, because here, do whatever you want, but you can't do this, you gotta do this, you gotta have all this. So the fact that you're able to make a car as beautiful as this and win the award, too, with a modern car, which is quite impressive. Louis, thank you very much. Thanks to thank you. Thank you for taking the time. You're uh, thank you. really, really inspired. Now, these Belgians are very clever. <laughs>
that they that would rival the Rolls Royce when, both when, in price and right. prestige. And when Ford brought this car out, yeah. the launch price was about eleven thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah. It was the most expensive American car right, at the time. Right. Yeah. yeah, because this is what nineteen. What year 56? is this? Fifty-six. This is fifty-six. Yeah. So yeah. most cars. I mean, your top of line Cadillac was probably forty-eight hundred dollars, right, right? Right. Yeah. So this was. I think really, that's probably right. But the thing I like about it is the lines of this car are so restrained compared to other cars of the 50s of acres of chrome like it's put on with a trowel. This has a nice, clean design. Almost looks like a giant two-seater Thunderbird, doesn't it? Well, you know, the interesting thing about this car is the is when Etzel and E.T. Gregory designed the 38 Continental, mm -hmm. when when my when my um, uncle William Clay Ford became chief of styling, he wanted to recreate his father's Continental. Right. And that's what this is. And it's right. a total recreation. And, and I think the lines are beautiful and there's very little chrome on these cars. A sister car right to my left here. Yeah. And uh, but it's a just a beautiful one. It's very dome. tastefully done, especially when you consider the era it was built in. Look at these. This yep. is lovely here. Yep. The little uh, air scoops in right. there. Tell me, you rode in this as a little kid? No, because oh. my mother had gotten rid of it by that time. Oh, what did you do? No, I know. And I, oh. you know, I should have told her to keep it for me. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> my son Albert is uh, 21, and he was just fell in love with this car. So well, it's just I a think he had a car. vision. Yeah. Okay, we just saw Edsel Ford's mother's car. <laughs> now we're going to see his grandmother's car. This is like the matriarchal cars of the Ford family, and and you didn't get a chance to ride in this one either. No, I didn't, ah. and it was really a shame because, as you can tell, it's a beautiful car. Yeah. Now um, this is what a. 52 Lincoln? This is a 52 Lincoln, but it's been changed a lot. The grill is different because right. my grandmother wanted a different kind of grill. This is a hood ornament that wasn't of the time. It right. was an older hood ornament that she right. liked. All the chrome came off the car, and so it's... Uh, well, you know what's funny? It, it looks more like a grandma car because yeah. it has such a high roof. Well, you know she wore hats. Oh, she wore hats. Oh, she you wore have hats. to wear a hat. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, wear back hat. in the 50s, women of that era wore hats. Yeah, you got to wear the grandma hat. And so, hat. you know, you had to get in the back with your hat on. Right. So. So, now, it sounds like your grandmother's kind of a hot rodder because as I remember in 52, <laughs> Lincolns were flatheads, but this has the 317 cubic inch V8, correct? That's what she wanted. All right, yep. so she wanted to, so grandma knew I wanted to have valves? <laughs> no, but she never drove the car, Jane. <coughs> okay. My grandmother didn't even had a driver's license. No, but so. she knew she wanted overhead yes. valves. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yes, yeah, she, yeah, right. Grandma she was a very knew. modern woman. That's right. I want overhead valves. <laughs> yeah, very right. good. <laughs> Women. So this belongs to Ford Motor Company? No, it belongs to our family. To the family? Yeah, this oh, belongs to the family, and it's on display at the SL or Ford House in St. Clair right. Shores, Michigan. So. And tell me about this here. My grandmother wanted her initials on the door, so the, this is actually an E and an F, but it's Oh, it's so grandma was not a samurai sword no. fighter. No, that's... <laughs> I know. I know she wanted yes. the overhead valves. Yeah, she right. No, no, she's a very sophisticated... Okay. Those are actually... There's a, It's an E and an F for Eleanor. Oh, Ford. very so, cool. Um, is, is the wheelbase stretched or is that the standard? The wheelbase is standard, but what they did was they added a little bit to the rear because right. they, they was too cut off and my grandmother wanted some trunk space. And they used to wear so, bustles back in those days anyway. <laughs> no, so. they didn't. Sure. No, <laughs> so thank Jay, you very nice much. nice to see you. Always appreciate it. Always a pleasure to see you as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs>